Welcome to my first attempt at reviewing some Train Simulator Classic DLC. Or at least, I think it's the first. I've probably done something before, but I just don't remember. Anyway, given that I've made several reviews about TSW stuff recently, I thought it's about time I'd revisit Train Sim World's predecessor. Today's subject is one of my favourite metro systems in the world. That being the Glasgow Subway. Though I will try to remain unbiased. Especially since I'm not being paid to promote this stuff. This add-on was made by Thomson Interactive and released in April 2022. You may recognise that developer's name, as they made the WCML Trent Valley and Albula line routes many years ago, amongst other products. At its full price, the add-on costs 31 New Zealand dollars. As for whether or not that's good value for money, I'll leave that up for debate. For context, the Glasgow Subway is a unique 4-foot gauge underground railway system serving the largest city in Scotland. It opened in 1896, with Glasgow being one of only two UK cities to have an underground rapid transit system. The line is only 6.5 miles long, and runs in a double track loop round the centre of the city with 15 stations, passing under the River Clyde twice in the process. Going in a clockwise direction, the stations are as follows. Govan, Partick, Kelvinhall, Hillhead, Kelvinbridge, St George's Cross, Kalkadens, Buchanan Street, St Enoch, Sorry, I just had to reference that song at least once. Continuing from Shields Road, the remaining stations are Kinning Park, Cessnock, and Ibrox, and then we arrive back at Govan. There is a complex set of switches between Govan and Ibrox, which is the longest distance between two stations on the line. This is the place where trains branch off and go to Broomlone Depot, which is the only part of the system that's above ground. As much as I would like to, I'm not going to go into a detailed explanation about the system's history, because that's not the point of this video. Amongst many other things, the Glasgow subway is notable for its three-year-long closure in the late 1970s for major renovations. The route and train simulator depicts the line as it is today complete with the unique trains built by Metro Camel of Birmingham. Though, curiously, we only get the driving coaches, and they are often coupled in three-car consists for extra capacity. These vehicles are numbered from 101 to 133, but in real life there were eight additional trailer cars built in 1992. Unfortunately, the trains come in a plain orange livery, presumably due to licensing restrictions. In real life, the units have orange, grey and white patterns with SPT branding as well. What follows is some of the more unique liveries that these things have carried in recent times. 101 was painted in a heritage livery reminiscent of the original 1896 rolling stock, but now carries this ugly thing promoting some phone application. 104, 204 and 132 were done up in a net zero livery in 2022, presumably as part of COP26. 118, 201 and 125 got a different net zero livery in the same year. And 130 has this unusual grey livery with a black cab front. The real livery we get in game looks very similar to this one from 1997, albeit without the SPT branding. Scenery wise, the in-game route is quite unusual. As Broomlone Depot is the only part of the system that's above ground, this is the only area of the route that has proper scenery. Nothing is depicted above the underground loop, presumably to improve the frame rate. The developers of the Frankfurt U-Bahn route did the same thing for their underground stations. And incidentally, this is another one of my favourite routes in TS Classic.
Unlike the Frankfurt's U-Bahn, which is an extensive network with a lot of scenery variation, the Glasgow subway is pretty much the exact opposite. It's just a double-track underground loop with the little spur off to the depot. There's not much, if any, scenario viability, because all you're doing is driving a train round and round in circles. Either that, or the occasional depot moves to add a tiny bit of variety. Although these trains don't really have a proper designation, I call them the GS2 class, with GS being short for Glasgow Subway, and 2 referring to these being the second generation of trains for the system. Of course, my unofficial designation is not to be confused with the GS2 steam locomotives from the Southern Pacific Railroad. The interior of these things is quite strange, especially with the low headroom in the passenger saloon. This train doesn't have a normal passenger view, where you would press the 5 key to teleport into the passenger saloon. Instead, you press the left or right arrow keys from the cab view to go into the saloon that way. This is the same thing that Thompson did for their Class 350. As for the passengers themselves, they don't work in the usual way that we've seen on most TS routes. Instead, you'll see random static figures placed on the platform that will teleport in or out of the train at random. There's a unique automatic train operation system recreated in this add-on, with instructions on how to set it up being found in one of the included scenarios. Next stop, Calvin Hall. You've also got the option of driving the trains manually, but this is very difficult as you have to be very precise with timing the control inputs so your train doesn't overshoot the platform. As predictable and repetitive as driving on a circular loop can be, there are still a couple of interesting points on the line that I want to mention. For instance, just east of Govan Station you go through a break in the normal tubular tunnels, as at this point you are directly below the depot, and this was the location where the crane used to lift the coaches one at a time in and out of the depot each day. That was a feature of the pre-1977 system, as it did not have any points. The speed limit throughout the system is usually 55 km per hour, with a severe restriction down to 18 km an hour at the western end of Kalkadens station. Between Govan and Partick, you can just about see the remains of Merkland Street station. This is the subway's only abandoned station, as it was replaced by Partick in the late 1970s rebuild. Partick is also the only station on the line that has a direct interchange with mainline services, as ScotRail's commuter trains call at the platforms above ground. The stations are all accurately modelled with their distinct differences between them. Three of the busier stations, namely Hillhead, Buchanan Street and Ibrox, were rebuilt with a new platform while the original island platform had a glass barrier installed, though for some reason this is missing in game. Some stations, such as Calcadens, retain their original island platform from the pre-1977 days. Since Enoch, Govan and Partick have one platform for each track rather than an island platform. And West Street is notable for its retaining of the rather dated yellow tiles round the tunnel ceiling. Overall, I'd say this route is still good, but it's not one I would drive on too often because of how little there is to do. Not to mention the GS2 rolling stock being completely incompatible with any other route in the game, because I'm pretty sure this is the only TS route that uses the unusual 4 foot gauge. As for why the real Glasgow subway uses such an unusual gauge, I have no sodding clue. But if you're after an underground route, or just any route that's a bit out of the ordinary, I still suggest picking it up and trying it out for yourself. <laughs>